The New York Islanders got it done. They beat the Devils 4-1 to one and are headed back to the Stanley Cup playoffs for a rematch with the Carolina Hurricanes. They also accomplished something that hasn't been done since 1997. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, the Islanders did it. They are in the playoffs. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, Send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at LockedOnIsles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season and postseason long. And uh, we'll also, I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. And it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. Islanders four, Devils one. The Islanders go to the rock and take care of business. They have clinched third place in the Metropolitan Division. <clears throat> and they will face... For the second straight year, the Carolina Hurricanes in the postseason. And now we will have a special playoff preview crossover for our Friday show. Just giving you a heads up. Make sure you join us for that. What we've seen, you know, from this Islanders team was impressive. And I'm not going <clears> to <throat> sit here and say that this was the best game the Islanders have played all season. They weren't dominant, but what they were was efficient. And as soon as they took the lead late in the first, midway through the first period, and then when Kyle Palmieri scored the power play goal to make it 2 nothing late in the first period, <clears throat> very rarely did you feel like the Islanders were being threatened. And, you know, they only got 18 shots on goal, but... Four of them, officially anyway, went in because you had a goal call back because the puck did not fully cross the goal line. So poor Alexander Romanov lost the goal. But bottom line, <clears throat> the Islanders did exactly what they needed to do, and they only allowed 24 shots on goal. And look, you're playing without your best puck-moving defenseman in Noah Dobson. Dauber missing the game again. Also, Hudson Fashing in there, again, picking up another assist. Simon Holmstrom sitting. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think this team just did what it had to do to shut down what is a fast New Jersey Devils team. And, you know, the Islanders didn't get off to a great start. Took them, what, about 10 minutes to get their first shot on goal. But it went in. So, uh, you know, that, that kind of worked. And what a great play it was. Pierre Engvall with a beautiful pass to J.G. Pajot. And the Islanders end up, you know, winning this one, going away by a score of 4-1. to one. And it's encouraging to see this team limit the opposition's chances and limit their shots on goal and limit their quality chances. And you know what? We actually also saw the penalty kill come up big because – the Islanders did go to the box three different times and killed off all three power plays. So, you know, that is a, a definite uh, encouraging factor. 
because they're going to need the power play and the penalty kill to be better in the playoffs. But we've got time to discuss all of that. And believe me, we will this week and beyond as the Islanders uh, clinch a playoff berth. It's great that we don't even have to watch the scoreboard anymore. As soon as the Islanders won, we knew they were third in the Metro. And now everyone else can fight over that second wild card because the Islanders don't have to worry. And the game on Wednesday against Pittsburgh will not affect the Islanders' playoff status. It may, however, still affect the Penguins' playoff status. And we'll get to that before the game. Hero and goat of the game. <clears throat> um, hero of the game, to me, is team defense. <clears throat> I could go Varley. I could definitely, you know, go Engvall or Palmieri uh, or Brock Nelson. I can go a lot of different directions. But to me, limiting the Devils to 24 shots and <clears throat> limiting them on the power play and just getting a solid performance as a team, that mattered the most in my mind as far as hero of the game. And uh, go to the game. You know, do I really have one in, in this instance? Yeah, here's here's my go to the game, the slow start. The slow start to me was disappointing. And I, I, I think that when you got that slow start and, you know, here it was, playoffs on the line, you don't want to let it go to the last game of the season when you'd be going head-to-head -head potentially with Pittsburgh. Everything fell into place after that first goal. It woke up the team, and from then on in, there was no looking back. So the first 10 minutes, that slow start was a little disappointing, but overall, just a solid business-like effort for the New York Islanders, and they are back in the playoffs. And barring a big change, uh, the Islanders will have accomplished something that no NHL team has done in this century. The Islanders right now are ranked 32nd or dead last in the NHL on the penalty kill. The last time a team that ranked last in the NHL on the penalty kill qualified for the Stanley Cup playoffs was in 1996-97 when the Montreal Canadiens did it. And oh, by the way, there were six fewer teams in the NHL back then. So. Uh, this is a pretty rare accomplishment by the New York Islanders. Now, it's not official yet, uh, but it would take a lot for the Islanders to pass the Anaheim Ducks and get into 31st place on the PK. So unless that happens, the New York Islanders will become the first team since 1997 to be worst in the league on the penalty kill over the course of the season and still qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Just a fun little trivia piece there. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about how the Islanders did this because this team has been so inconsistent all year, and yet we are seeing them pick up their game as of late. What's some of the reasons they've been able to do that? We'll talk about that. Uh, Plus, our Islanders' birthday of the day, a very popular former uh, first-round draft pick of the Islanders who is still active in the NHL right now but played with the Isles in the late 2000s through the mid-2010s. We've got all that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new, <clears throat> new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose, you can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. And hey, Islander fans, now that we know who we're facing in the first round of the playoffs, what kind of odds would you get on the Islanders winning the cup or winning game one or winning the series? Lots of bets to check out at FanDuel. 
What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's Locked On's NHL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on the Locked On Sports Today, the 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th, 7 o'clock Eastern Time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle, the Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. The difference between what the Islanders were most of the year and what the Islanders have been down the stretch in this recent point streak of what eight games that they now have is getting more from your depth players. You look at this win over the devils. Some of the guys who really contributed and correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of these guys are the same guys who have been contributing a lot over the course of this point streak. Hudson Fashion with another assist. Second straight game, he's played well. Kyle McLean pitching in with a goal. Pierre Engball, two helpers. He's playing some of his best hockey recently. We know Noah Dobson's out of the lineup. So Mike Riley stepping up. He had an assist. He was a plus two. We, we, we talked a little bit about Kyle Palmieri, how hot he's been. Essentially, really, since Patrick Waugh took over as the coach. But having Palmieri get the job done on a more consistent basis. Brock Nelson, who was kind of, you know, slumping a little bit when he picked it up, the Islanders picked it up. J.G. Pajot starting to get on the scoreboard a little bit. These are the things you need to have. It can't just be. Barzal, Horvat, and 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 you know Brock Nelson putting in pucks. Got to talk about, for example, Casey Sezikis. Didn't figure on the points uh, against the Devils, but since they moved him up to the top line, he's been contributing. He's added attitude and juice. The penalty kill a little bit better against the Devils. The power play, well, we know it's still. Needs a little work, but they got a goal against the Devils. These are the little things when you have scoring, not just from three guys, but from up and down your lineup. That's when you win consistently. You don't win every game, but that's when you win consistently. And when your special teams are not a detriment, when you get consistent goaltending. And look, Varlamov has been outstanding over this personal winning streak that he's having and over the point streak that the Islanders are having. And then you got a strong game from Sorokin, the other, the other uh, game against the Rangers as well. Let me ask you this too. Who do you start in game one against the Carolina Hurricanes? Do you stick with the hot hand in Varley or do you say Sorokin's our number one guy? We go back to Ilya. I think you got to ride the hot hand. These are all questions that have to be answered. But as far as, you know, the little things that make a difference up and down the lineup, suddenly you're getting contributions from a lot of people. And it, it doesn't have to be the same guys every night. One night it could be Matt Martin. One night it could be Cal Clutterbuck. One night it could be, Alexander Romanov, another night, you know, Casey Sezikis can pitch in. But as long as somebody is pitching in, and it's not just the same three or four guys producing offense, that's when you have a chance to win consistently. 
And in the playoffs, it matters more. It matters more. <clears throat> and, you know, the Islanders all of a sudden, a little more balanced here when you look it over. Horvat, Nelson, they're over the 30 goal mark this year. Barzal, Palmieri, and Lee, they're over the 20 goal mark. That's five guys. That's five guys with 20 or more. You want more than that, obviously, but again, get that balance. Get your players producing, coming up, scoring timely goals. They don't have to score 50 in the playoffs. You got to score timely goals and you got to be consistent. And the team defense, you know, the Islanders have been doing a better job, not a flawless job, but a better job of getting the puck out of their zone. We saw it big time against the Devils last night. We're seeing it over the course of this point streak. And right now, right now, that has to continue if the Islanders have any hope of pulling off an upset against the Carolina Hurricanes. They are going to need to play consistent defensive hockey they're going to need to be better on special teams. They're going to need to get contributions beyond the top four guys offensively. All of these things can happen. And it may be a lot to ask. And I know the Hurricanes are not the best matchup for the Islanders. But you know what else? There's a couple of factors that I like about this. And these are just my initial thoughts about what we can expect in this playoff series, couple of things in the Islanders' favor. Number one, no pressure. Pressure's all on Carolina. Carolina is an elite cup contender. They have been for a while. Their window may be closing after maybe next year, maybe their last chance for a little while. Uh, Carolina is expected. You know, they don't win the Stanley Cup this year. That's a disappointing year. They've been to the conference final so many times haven't been able to close the deal. Islanders, they're there. Nobody, you know, a month ago, nobody thought the Islanders were getting in. They had, what, a 12% chance of making the playoffs a month ago? You're playing with house money. And then the other factor that I like, potentially, about this series is revenge. And yeah, revenge will only get you so far. I understand that but it gives your team maybe a little boost, maybe a little boost to steal one of those two games in Carolina to open up the series. Uh, I, I, I think having lost to Carolina a year ago, lost to them before that as well, little revenge is not a bad thing. And I think having that be in the back of the Islanders' minds cannot hurt this team heading into this series. So a big night for the New York Islanders. They are in the playoffs. They are the third place team in the Metro. 81 games to clinch a playoff berth. We know who they're playing. And now the next chapter, the next, uh, you know, the next part of this journey that we took with this team starting all the way back in training camp in September uh, will be round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs against the Carolina Hurricanes. We've got more to discuss on today's show. We'll talk a little bit about Wednesday's season finale. Should, you know, what should the Islanders do as far as how they handle it? We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Islander fans, we're back in the playoffs, so I want to remind you, you could win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. That's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Barzal, McDavid, or Crosby will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. 
To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly, correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Islander fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So the Islanders have one game left and they have a couple of ways they could play us. And in my mind, first of all, you're not going to sit back and tank. Okay. You're not going to give up that once you, once the puck drops, your guys have to be giving the proper effort. Okay. Let's uh, make sure that we understand that. But the question is, do you start bringing up some guys? Do you want to see Ruslan Ishkakov? Do you want to see, uh, you know, some of the William Dufours and the Matt Maggios? Do you want them to get a chance to play? And in my mind, let, let, let's start with this. Ilya Sorokin, most likely, is the goalie because you want to keep him sharp and you want him to build off that strong performance against the Rangers. Varley has been getting a lot of work lately. Give him a rest. You only have a day or two off between the end of the regular season, or well, you know, three days at most. To, and we don't know the schedule yet, but between the end of the regular season and the start of the postseason, and you know, you're traveling to Carolina. So to me, you go with Sorokin, you keep him sharp, you rest Varley a little bit, and both goalies hopefully are ready for the playoffs. That's what I would do. I would start calling up some guys and giving some guys a chance. Samuel Bolduc, in my mind, plays in this game. Oliver Wallstrom plays in this game. You know, would I rest guys like Bo Horvat or Matthew Barzal? Yeah, I would. I would call up Anishkakov. I would call up three or four guys from Bridgeport, put them in the lineup, put some of the black aces in the lineup. I would not, however, put Noah Dobson in the lineup. There is nothing to be gained in my mind. The, the the possibility of Dauber aggravating that injury again, whatever it is, the upper body injury, maybe a hand or a wrist. You want to do everything you can to make sure Noah Dobson is ready for game one against Carolina this weekend. And therefore, Dauber sits. He sits. Anybody who's tired, you know, they, they seem to be resting Robert Bortuzzo. He's a little older. Maybe you, you sit him out of this season finale. Any guy who could use a break, who is a little banged up, who is dealing with some minor nagging injuries, let them sit. Let them sit. You could replace three, four, five forwards in this lineup. You could replace a couple of defensemen in this lineup and basically go with a team that, you know, I think they'll be energized. You won't see guys like, you know, if you call up Maggio and Dufour and Ishkakov, those guys will be energized. This is like a big deal for them. Let them go out there, show what they can do, give you that little extra bit of juice. Now, will Lou Lamorello do that? 50-50 50-50 at best, probably less than that. But that's what I would do. You you have to think about the long term. And the best thing for your team is to be healthy 
and prepared to play the game in the playoffs. And if you lose this game to Pittsburgh eight to nothing, so what? I mean, you don't want to give up that many goals. You don't want to play poorly, but so what? Don't worry about it. Give these guys a chance. Get them in the lineup. Let them, you know, injuries happen in hockey. We've already seen Noah Dobson out. Okay. So Sebastian Ajo steps in. Mike Riley steps in. Robert Bortuzzo steps in. You don't want to get guys hurt. You want to keep guys ready and fresh, and you want to give guys a chance. So let's hope that that is the approach that the Islanders are going to take on Wednesday against the Penguins. And you know what? If that means the Penguins win and they get into the playoffs, or they don't get into the playoffs, still, you know, a lot of teams battling for that one last spot. Well, let the chips fall where they may. The only thing you owe the league is once the puck drops, you give an all-out effort. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. A fan favorite, a class act. Uh, today is the 36th birthday of former Islanders winger Kyle Oposo. Oposo, seventh overall pick in the first round by the Islanders back in 2006. Spent a couple of years at the University of Minnesota and then joined the Islanders late in the 07 08 season. Became a full time player the following year. Had three 20 plus goal seasons with the Isles, including a career best 27 goals and 69 points in 2013 2014. Played on the top line. He and John Tavares, Matt Molson, big part of the team's success in the uh, you know mid 2000s, especially. And then he went on to play for Buffalo and right now is with the Florida Panthers. So, you know, they they acquired a Poso at the deadline. He was a captain in Buffalo. Will he retire? Well, 36, maybe. Uh, he may still have another season in him. Had 12 goals, 22 points, playing bottom six minutes. So clearly Kyle is capable. We go back. And look at one of his better games as an Islander. A home game at the Old Barn, the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, January 16th, 2015. The Penguins are the visiting team. Mark andre Fleury, the Pens goalie. Yaro Halak, the goalie for the Islanders. And in this game, after the Penguins take a 2-0 lead late in the first period, Kyle Oposo scores from John Tavares and Josh Bailey to make it 2-1. to one. And then with the Isles down three to two after 40 minutes, Kyle Oposo from Bailey and Thomas Hickey, six and a half minutes into the third. And then almost 12 minutes into the third, Oposo from Bailey and Travis Hamanick. And then on the power play with two and a half minutes left, Oposo from Brock Nelson and John Tavares. For Kyle Oposo, a career best four goal game. He was a plus three. He scored the game winner, and he had a team high six shots on goal in uh, 18 minutes and 15 seconds of action. Islanders beat the Penguins 6-3 to three in front of a sellout crowd at the Old Barn. Kyle Oposo, his only four-goal game of his career, he did have two other hat tricks. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We'll preview the season finale and hopefully we'll have a little bit of a better idea of how the Islanders are going to approach it. Uh, and we'll start to think ahead toward this playoff series with the Carolina Hurricanes. Can't wait for that. We'll also have our weekly farm report on, <clears throat> excuse me, on all things Bridgeport Islanders. Have a great day, everybody. Savor this moment. We're in the playoffs. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islander.